Good morning, Upper Church. Well, if you can see we're doing something a little bit different today. Today is the day that our class has changed over, so we have kids that are going to be moving up from kids' church into preteens and preteens to youth, and uh, also we have two different uh, age groups in kids' church here, and so we've got all of our kids out here with us today, and so we are super excited to have you here with us. And what we're going to do is something a little bit different this morning. Uh, first of all, it has been brought to my attention that there is a, uh, someone who's going to be doing a message at a large church in Texas, and he has asked us to pray for him. And so we're going to do that right now. We're just going to lift, lift up his name to the Lord as the Lord blesses him. The senior pastor there is uh, out today, and so he asked this guy to fill in, and his name is Robert Shelfett. And uh, we're just going to take a minute. We're just going to pray for him that God just blesses him. So if y'all would, let's just go to the Lord in prayer right now. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for uh, men and women all across the globe that are teaching kids and preaching your word today. And right now, we just uplift this uh, gentleman to you, Robert Shelfett. God, that you would just richly bless him and help him to communicate your word in a way that's going to benefit your kingdom, change someone's life. And God, we just pray that right now you prepare our hearts for worship, that we may serve you with all we've got. Open up our hearts and our ears to hear a word from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, we're going to do something fun. Thank you for uh, joining me in prayer over that. And so we have uh, a challenge today that we're going to make. This is opened up for all you kids, that you have the opportunity to challenge your parent or someone else to an airplane battle. Now, so what we're going to do is, is that you, adult, whoever you got, we've got some paper. You can come up here, and we're going to make some paper airplanes, and we're going to see who can fly it. The furthest. The goal is, is to try to hit the black curtain onto the other side. So, all you kids who want to participate with us, come on up here. If you, I want you to challenge an adult. So, bring a parent with you. Uh, if not, just come on up here by yourself. But I know that some of our girls were going to challenge somebody else. So, come on up here. We got your table. Grab your sheet of construction paper. We're going to see who can get it. All right, youth, you can come and join us. Yep, come and join us. We're not afraid. Come on. Yeah, come up here and make your paper airplane. Yeah, guys, make your paper airplane. Whatever. She's going to show you. Good deal. You <laughs> wire it out. This is my dad. He's been challenged by one of uh, his grandkids. There you go, make your paper airplane. We're going to see who's got it here. This is pretty cool. I guess they jumped at the opportunity to make a paper airplane. Not shy at all. There you go. Now, the whole point of this is that, uh, I say with making the paper airplane, there's going to be a little bit of skill that goes into this, and we're going to see how well some of these fly. And so what the goal is, is that we're going to start right here with the line, and we're going to see who can get across the stage and hopefully hit. So we do have a few adults, so we're going to see how far theirs go. We're going to see who can throw their airplane the furthest. You got it? Nice. You going to make you one? You sure you don't want to make you one? You can? Okay, you don't have to. All right, whenever you got your airplane ready, I want you to come right here. I got a line right here. And we're going to start seeing who can get their airplane to go the furthest. See, I'm glad that we got some youth that's involved in this. Are you ready? All right. Once you get your airplane, just come right over here and get in the line. And we're going to see who's can, who can rock it. All right, here we go. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this. All right. What's your name? Tobias. Tobias. All right, guys. Here's Tobias. We're going to cheer him on. See how far it goes. Oh, pretty good. Pretty good. All right, let's see. All right, you ready to throw it? Yeah. All right, see how far you can get it. Whoa, that was a good one. That was a good one. All right, let's see. You can just leave it, Salem. She's not going to. All right, good effort. Good effort. You, do, you, do you want this masterpiece back? She says no. All right, I'm going to have you scoot back a little bit to my line. Scoot back just a little bit. There you go. All right, let's see what you got. Oh, that was a nice floater. All right, are you ready? All right, go ahead and throw it. See how far you can take it. <laughs> that was an awesome job. All right, let's go, Abby. Let's see what you got. Here we go. Here goes Abby's. 
Oh, that's a pretty good one. All right, let's see what you got. Man, that did an awesome loop-de-loop. -loop. All right, here we go. Well, that was an awesome plane. All right, good job. All right, are you ready? Oh, you did yours, didn't you? You want to do it again? All right, throw it again. Well, that was a great effort. All right, Natty Cakes, you ready? All right, let's go. Oh, it went good. All right, you ready? All right, let's go, Callie. <laughs> it crashed and burned. That was a good try. Are you ready? All right, let's go, Jackson. Wow. That would have went straight. That would have won. All right, let's see what you got here. And it came back. That was an awesome boomerang airplane. All right, good job. All right, are you ready? Hey, you're step right here to the line. There you go. All right, let's throw it up. That went good, too. Okay. All right, let's go, big girl. See what you got. <laughs> good job. Are you ready to throw yours? How far are you going to throw it? All the way. Here you go. Good job. All right, are you ready? All right, step right here to the line. You ready? All right, let's see what you got. Oh, that was a great plane. Good job. Yeah, good job. Yeah, go get it. All right, let's see what you got. <laughs> that was a good try. Good try. All right, we got Elijah here. A for effort? Well, yeah, but I really want you to go really far. Oh, that was a good try. Good try. All right. How far is this one going to go? All the way. You ready? All right, here we go. It was a good try. It was a good try. Oh, this is going to make it all the way, ain't it? There we go. Oh, and it got stuck. All right. All right, let's go. Here we go. Oh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. All right, let's see what you got. Oh, I think we have our winner. Y'all give us a hand. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Now, the reason why I wanted to do that exercise was is that we all saw that some were, well, float really good. Some uh, twirled and loop-de-loop, -loop, and some came backwards. Yeah, we'll just leave it. And so this is exactly what we want in life, is that we want to soar far. We want that for our kids we want that for ourselves. And as the time that we're, everybody was thrown in the same direction, I mean, nobody threw it backwards, but some of those planes went backwards. And just like life, sometimes no matter how hard you go, sometimes it seems like you're going backwards. So what do we do? Church, we keep building relationships with each other. We keep investing in our kids, and we keep moving forward. We want more for them than we wanted for ourselves. And if we keep our relationships focused on God and each other, God will take us far so far and we're so excited to have our teachers here with us today to the worst being in here uh, with us uh, miss Lindsay and preteen she's out here and all you kids and preteens i know you're all excited we all show your teachers some love come on clap for her. yeah uh we have our other teachers in here miss amanda's doing kids church she's back here right now uh, on the computer uh we're just so excited about what god is doing through our kids and through you all, God is just doing a great work. And we're just so excited to have you here. And so right now, we're going to join together and we're going to worship together. And we're just going to watch what God does today. After we worship, I'm going to come back here and say a few words. And then parents, you're going to be able to take your kids to class. And it's going to be an awesome day. So right now, let's go to the Lord in prayer and let's welcome worship. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day that we get to worship together with our kids. We just ask God that your will be done in our lives. Bless these teachers as they teach. Bless all your communicators as they preach your word across the pulpits today god that your word would be delivered in a powerful mighty way right now fathers lift up our voices to you help us father as we sing god that we please unto you heavenly father we thank you for all that you've done most of all for jesus that he saved us from our sins help us now god that we give you our very best as we lift our voices in praise to you in jesus name amen guys let's stand together and let's worship All right, guys, 
So all you parents and your kids, you can go ahead and take them to class. So y'all go ahead and do that. And I'm going to have everybody else, if you would, to stand. While they're doing this transition to meeting their teachers, everybody else, we're going to have you to take just a moment. Say hello to somebody. You can shake their hand. Tell them good morning. Uh, maybe you're like us. And many times you come to church and you're going, coming in on two wheels. So just for a moment, as we uh, let our kids transition to their classes, we're just going to stand, shake somebody's hand, tell somebody good morning, welcome them here. We got somebody new, our cameraman today, and his name is Tristan. He's back here on the camera, so uh, thanks, Tristan, for operating our camera today, buddy. We appreciate you. Good morning. Salem, you did good on your airplane. You came in second. Did you build that yourself? You did really good. Out of dollars? Wow, so you got a lot of experience building a paper airplane. All right, are you ready to go to class? It's going to be fun. They got a boat back there. A boat. Yeah, go have fun. Everybody join us online. We just want to say good morning and thank you uh, for joining us online. We're so excited you're here to join us. What's up, buddy? I'm good, man. What about you? Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't build up a paper airplane. You probably would have wiped the floor, wouldn't you? <laughs> hey, Garrison, come here. Are you going to give me five, buddy? Yeah. yeah, you want to come up here? Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> this is an exciting day for our kids because I know that with uh, our kids, they've always looked forward to going to from kids' church up to preteens. And our teachers don't always get to see the parents. They just kind of know parents through kids and so it's just a neat opportunity for them to kind of get to know them and uh, <laughs> they get to get to meet the parents and kids so it's a pretty neat opportunity so here just a minute we'll get started so thank you guys for joining us today While they're getting finished, I'm going to run a couple announcements uh, through you. And so uh, something else to, we get to celebrate. So one thing that was just brought to our attention is that we have somebody else who has come forward wanting to go, I say, a next step with baptism. And uh, so I asked him, I said, so uh, Jackson, what do you want to do? And he went, next Sunday? And I went, okay. So next Sunday, we're going to be having another baptism here uh, at Ethel. So I think that's pretty, uh, that's pretty awesome. And... Uh, I asked him, I said, well, who do you want to help baptize you? And he was like, my dad. He's like, all right, well, great. So next Sunday, we're going to have the baptistry set up here, and we're going to have another baptism. So uh, that's, I say that's exciting. And it's been Labor Day weekend. Uh, there's no kid, or no kids church. There's no youth this evening. Uh, so whenever we dismiss here, you guys enjoy your family time. Uh, we just want you to spend as much time with your family as you can and enjoy your weekend. I know many of you are off uh, tomorrow, so it's a, it's a good time. I know not all of us are off, but I know some of us are, so I hope you get to enjoy your Labor Day weekend, and it's uh, going to be a great day. If uh, you're here with us today and you have your Bibles with you, we'll have you go ahead and turn to Joshua chapter 10. And as you do that, I say we'll start, um, I say, transitioning into, uh, I say for the Word today. And it's just kind of funny how things work. It's been an exciting few weeks just having another baptism now. Just a few weeks ago, we, uh, we baptized two uh, here, and then two weeks later, uh, we ended up baptizing several more in 
the river, uh, which is exciting. And so then having another baptism, I just have this, I say this dream that I just want to see a miracle of baptisms happen. That we do so many baptisms consecutively like that. I mean, just so many baptisms. Like I want to baptize so many people that I get bathtub fingers. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just like a miracle that I want to be a part of and and to see that. And a lot of times as we we go through life and we get so caught up in all the stuff that we've got to do and it seems almost lifeless or even pointless. Like you can never get caught up on the housework or you can never get caught up onto the laundry. Or there's always something that needs to be done and it's like no matter how much laundry you do, the very next week you're going to have to repeat it all over again. It's just never ending. And then there's the frustration of having to deal with the socks. And uh, see, you're laughing because you understand what I'm talking about. And when you have six living in the household, and so there's 12 socks for one day, and it's just like, oh, man. And it's just, and it's just never ending. And so then we go through our life, and we have this stuff that never ends, and we're busy on top of that. We have to go to the grocery store. We have to cook. For your kids, it's like schoolwork, schoolwork, schoolwork. You get tired of doing math, math. You get tired of studying for spelling tests and spelling tests. like, where does it end? You know, where's... Where's the fun in this? You know, where's the power of God in this? And so we're going through life wondering, where is the miracle of God at? You know, like, are miracles, miracles, are they happening around us? Are miracles there? Do we, do we see it? Or do we think that our life is just a boring, mundane routine? And see, I fall into that trap. I'm thinking, okay, God, where, where are you at? And sometimes in your own marriage, you can look at that and thinking, okay, God, where are you at in this? Where's, where's the excitement? Where's the romance at? You know? Or then your own family, like, man, I didn't think that we were going to take this direction. And we're so busy and we hardly get to see each other. And we're going here and there. And your kids are going to be wondering the same thing with school. There's so much responsibility and so much work. It's like, what do I do? How can I get through this? You know? So where, where's God at? Are miracles still occurring? That's what I want to ask you in your life. Are miracles still happening? Are they going on around us? Can you see them? Now, I can point you out in the direction of a few people. And a few weeks ago, you heard from uh, Sarah Slush. She got up here, and she was talking about her story between her and Garrett and uh, Garrison. And it went all the way through um, to the point of um, couldn't have kids and then finally did. And then complications in pregnancy. And then um, when he was born, he wasn't breathing. And they painted this picture that wasn't going to look good. And you've never seen a more healthy, strong boy than it carry on a full adult conversation. It is absolutely awesome what this kid does. And, uh, and just from a minute ago, we are doing a fellowship, and he said he wanted to come up here. And so he gave me five. I mean, man, you can't tell me miracles don't happen. It wasn't much long after that on a, uh, on a Sunday. Uh, after church, I got a text. Uh, from uh, Josh Sparkman, and it's like, bro, I don't know. And they were at uh, Johnson City Hospital with Callie, and uh, immediately, I immediately went over there, and I saw the doctors come in, and and the seriousness of their face and the expression, the time I mean, uh, the daughter Callie, you know, this is a brain tumor. We're going to fly you guys. We're going to go uh, see a specialist. We're going to get this addressed and took care of, and. Uh, I heard it with my own. It wasn't just through them. I heard the doctors. I heard it. And when less than a week, it ended up being no big deal. They drained it. I mean, she's awesome. She was up for flying a paper airplane. You can't tell me that miracles don't happen. I can tell you numerous stories of miracles that God's done in my life that under any other circumstances, I should not be here. I jumped off a moving motorcycle with no helmet and survived it. And my parents witnessed the whole thing. Man. And you can probably think of your own life. Looking back, you can see how God's hand has been upon you. And how miracles have taken place. That maybe you wouldn't be here otherwise. Maybe just you being here is a miracle in itself. Maybe it would be through divorce or, or drugs or struggles or financial, whatever that is. We look back to our life and say, man, God, I can see you. And I think that's the point. Looking back, we can, we can see the hand of God. But when we're in it, I'm not so sure that we always see it. Well, in Joshua chapter 10, we see an unbelievable miracle. 
Because sometimes the miracles don't happen without your work and your effort, your thoughts, and your prayers. And church, I'm going to tell you, life sometimes is very, very challenging. It can be very difficult. Very difficult. To the point where some days you don't even want to try. God, where's going to be the end in sight? How is this going to how is this going to happen? How is this miracle going to take place? Well, this is what was on my heart to share with you. is in Joshua chapter 10, start with verse 3. And there's some very unique names in here, and I don't want you to get so confused with the names. Uh, so we're just going to read through these first few verses. And in Joshua ch- chapter 10, start with verse 3, it says, Therefore uh, Adonai Zedek, king of Jerusalem, sent word to Hoham, king of Hebron, and to Piram, king of Jarmuth, to Japhia, king of Lachish, and to Debar, the king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us attack Gibeon. For it has made peace with Joshua and the sons of Israel. So the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jamarth, the king of Lachish, and the king of Eglon, gathered together and went up, they with all their armies, and encamped by Gideon, and fought against it. So here you immediately have a battle scene that's taking place. And any time you look into the Bible, particularly in the Old Testament, you're going to see a battle scene. So many battles. And typically, it is with God's people and enemies. And here you have five enemies led by five kings of surrounding nations that are coming against one common enemy. It's Gibeon. And Joshua has partnered with him. Joshua is the leader of the nation of Israel at this time. And the reason why these kings were so concerned is because Joshua had just led Israel to walk around the city of Jericho seven days. And on that seventh day, seven times around that city and the walls came tumbling down. They defeated that city. Now, they have partnered with this nation, Gibeon. They have come to a peace And now these kings are troubled. Nobody, um, Joshua didn't ask for any trouble. He didn't do anything to bring a battle on to himself or his people. But now they have an enemy. And it's just like you in your life. Many of the things that you face, you didn't ask for. But yet, circumstances and trouble has found you. And this is from everybody from little kids to adults. That one way or another, sometimes by our own, our own position, or our own decisions, can lead us into a situation of trouble or battle. And then other times, you didn't ask for it. But yet, there you are. And the only way that I can explain this is, is that nobody can ask for a flat tire on their car or a dead battery. But yet, it happens. And so just real quick, if you've ever had a flat tire or a dead battery, would you just raise your hand up? It just happens. There's not some sort of evil battery person that's going around just decharging your battery. There's nobody going around just trying to let air out of your tires or just punch it with a nail. It happens. And many times in life, you're going through life, and some things are going to happen. Nothing happened to Joshua. It just came. It just came. Now, the important part is, is what we do next. Now, when we have a flat tire, what do we do? We either change it or we get somebody else to fix it. We have a dead battery, we either take care of it or let somebody else take care of it, but we get it took care of. What about Joshua? Five kings and the leaders of their armies are coming against him. What do you do? What do you do when you're faced with a battle, when you're faced with a circumstance? What do you do? So here's what Joshua does, and this is verse 6. Then the man of Gibeon went and sent word to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal, saying, Do not abandon your servants. And they say this because they had a peace treaty among them. Do not abandon your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. For the kings of the Amorites that live in the hill country have assembled against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him and all the valiant warriors. I love this, the people of war. Church, who have you got friends in your life? I, bet, I, I doubt you're going to refer to your friends are of people of war. But these are some of the friends that I want. 
people of war, valiant men. And that word valiant, all this means is, is that people of confidence or determination. These are determined people. These are the people that you want in your life. People that are determined. They can get things done. I love it when I say that I've got a problem and one of my friends say, I know a guy. That's what I'm saying. I know a guy. If you're going to go into battle with somebody, like, I know a guy. I know who I'm going to take with me. Do you know who you would take with you into a battle? You, these are the people that are close to you in your life. It's the same thing. Like if you have a, a water leak in your house, you need a plumber. Do you know a guy? You know, or if you need your AC looked at, you know, do you know a guy? You need your car looked at, do you know a guy? So Joshua got these people together. He knew them. He knew who to take. He didn't take just any of people. He took these people of war with him. Now this is the big deal. Because we need, as we're going through life, we need good people around us. Church, that's the first thing that I want you to leave with today. You want a miracle in your life? Surround yourself with good people. A few years ago, we were at a, a high school commencement graduation, and this speaker spoke, and he, he said a whole lot of things I'm not going to go into detail of, but this one thing that, that he said just stuck. And he said, it's hard to soar with the eagles when you're surrounded by turkeys. So who are you surrounded with? A bunch of turkeys? Or you want to soar with the eagles? Church, it's the same thing. Surround yourself with great people, and you're setting yourself up to see a miracle of God. So it's a big deal. Joshua gathered up the people of war, and they went. And I love this. So they're on their way. They're marching. They had several hundred miles to go. So they're going to this battle. And if this was me, this is what I do. Typically on Sunday mornings, I'm very quiet in the car. I'm just talking to the Lord. All right, Lord, this is, this is Sunday. It's your day. You've given this word. It's in me. And have your will in your way. And then the whole time I'm praying, I was like, God, be with Lindsay and preteen. You know, be be with our youth pastor and his wife as they lead our youth. God, be with Super Dave and Supreme. Help them to rock that sound booth. God, be with our AC today. May it actually work. God, be with our kids' church teachers. God, be with our kids. Be with our parents. And I, I'm just talking to the Lord all the, way, all the way. And I imagine Joshua doing this with going to the battle saying, All right, Lord, this is your battle. You've got, I've seen what you've done in the past. You've got this. And in verse 8, it says, the, the Lord said to Joshua, Do not fear them, for I have given them into your hands. Not one of them shall stand before you. Now, this is powerful. Joshua's going to battle. He's on his way to this battle, and the Lord said, Don't fear them. I've already given them into your hands. It almost would imply that the battle is already over, but it hasn't begun. And many times, we're looking for a way out, an escape. How can I get out of this situation? Church, I don't see this in the Bible. I don't see a get out of a situation. I don't see that. But what we see are prayer requests and God's push to go through the battle under the leadership of God. Not a get out card, but a way to go through it. Now this is the second part that I want you to leave with today about going into your battle, about seeing a miracle, is that it's going to take you going through these situations. See, that's the reason why miracles happen. It's not because everything is going as good. It's because something is happening. You need a miracle. And it's going to take an act of God for this to happen. So we're going to have to go through a battle. So Joshua, he's heading to the battle. And on the way there, the Lord says, Hey, you've already got this. You've already won. I've given them in your hands. So what does Joshua do? He gets prepared and goes to work. You need a miracle in your life? Get prepared and go to work. Get prepared and go to work. What does that mean? It means you do all you can and let God do the rest. So in verse 9 it says, So Joshua came up to them suddenly by marching all night from Gilgal. They had marched all night. Now if we had marched all night, we're going to need, I need a breather. Wouldn't you? I need a breather. I need a minute. I need a minute. Help. Let's rest. Let's rest it for the battle. But watch what they do. Immediately they marched there all night, in verse 10, and the Lord confounded them before Israel, and he slew them with a great slaughter. The Lord initiated the battle. So guess what they had to do? They had to jump right in. And he slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and pursued them by the way of the accent from Beth Horon and struck them as far as Askah and Mekedah. As they fled from before Israel, while they were at the descent of Beth Horon, the Lord threw large stones from heaven on them as far as Escot, and they died. There were more who died from the hailstones than, than those whom the sons of Israel killed with the sword. They marched all night. 
I know they were fatigued. I know they were tired. But they went straight into battle. The Lord did his part, his part throwing these hailstones, threw into a confusion. And as they were doing this, the Lord was fighting the battle as they were fighting the battle. Did you catch that? The Lord was fighting the battle as they fought in the battle. Church is the exact same thing as us having plenty of food in our refrigerator and our pantry and go, we have nothing to eat. And it's not that we have nothing to eat, it's that we don't want to take the time and the effort to fix something. I did the same thing growing up, and I cannot tell you how many times I told my mom, Mom, I'm hungry. And she would go, there's the kitchen. That's not what I wanted. What I wanted was Mom to fix me something to eat. Right? Now, I'm sure we've all done it. We've all, we've all done it. And then I'll be like, Mom, would you fix me something? That peanut butter and jelly is so much better when you fix it. And she would go on to say, well, you've got two hands and two feet. I couldn't get out of it. So sometimes we've got to get in there. We've got to get in there. We've got to do it. And so Joshua does the same thing. He already had the inside info. Hey, guys, we've got this battle. The Lord's already given it to us. But they had to work. So Joshua got prepared, and they went to work. We don't always feel like doing what we need to do. You need a miracle in your life. Sometimes you don't feel like doing what you need to do. When it comes to relationships, when it comes to work, when it comes to your family, there's not a single person that I know that goes, man, I cannot wait to get home and do housework. Oh, I just love it. Nobody says that. I've heard a few people say that about their grass, like they love to cut grass. And they're like, man, I, I got, I'm going to go home and mow. But then usually by the end of the mowing season, they're like, ugh, it'll be there tomorrow. Lord, send the rain. And then they're excited because it rained. So now, so now they don't have to end up mowing and just it's going to get taller the next day. But this is some battle that, it, that it's facing, that they are facing. And so when you're facing a battle, what do you do? Make the preparations and get to work. Don't just sit back and say, God, fix me a peanut butter and jelly. God, you take care of it. God doesn't work that way. You do all you can so he can do what you can't. So you do what you need to do and you go into battle. But don't dismiss the fact that the Lord is working. Even when you cannot see it, the Lord is working. So all of the nation of Israel, they wasn't there. They didn't hear all the communication that took place between Joshua and the Lord. What about all the men, all the, the soldiers of Gibeon? They didn't hear all of the battle plan that Joshua and the Lord had communicated. All they knew is that we're going to battle. And we're having Joshua and Israel to help. So they go to battle. But behind the scenes, God is working. Church, do not dismiss that God is doing things behind the scenes that you cannot see. Do not dismiss the fact that God is working. Church, there's nothing about a battle that's fun. Nothing. It's hard. We're going to have to work at it. I'm sure there's going to be some sweat involved. Obviously, there's going to be some blood involved. And now these people, they're fleeing. They're fleeing. So Israel gets a little bit of relief. Now, if the enemy is fleeing from me, I'm going to be like, all right, we're, we're done. So is the battle over? Is the battle over? The enemy is fleeing. So just because you get some relief doesn't mean that your battle is over. It doesn't mean that necessarily that things are going in your favor it doesn't necessarily mean that it's done. So don't assume the battle is over until it's over. And I, I love this. So what Joshua does is he makes a prayer request to God. This is verse 12. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the sons of Israel. And he said, in the sight of Israel, O sun, stand still at Gibeon, and O moon, in the valley of Ahalon. He makes a prayer request to the Lord. Uh, sun, stand still. Son, stand still. What a ridiculous request. Son, stand still. And because we've been educated through uh, science books, we know that the sun always stands still, right? But if we're going to describe it to someone, we always say, well, it's a beautiful sunrise and a beautiful sun set. And so in their terminology, we would use the same thing. Sun, stand still, don't move. But it's actually the earth that's moving and rotating around the sun. So Joshua is describing this prayer request to God the same way that we would. Sun, stand still. And he's asking specifically for the sun to stand still so they can finish the job. Not get out of it, but 
finish the job. You need a miracle in your life, see it through. Church, that's the greatest advice I can give you from God's Word, is see it through. Don't halfway do it. Go all in. Your kids need you to go all in. You can't halfway be a parent. Be all in at your job. You want to excel and do all. You've got to be all in. All in. What about your marriage? You've got to be all in. All in. Finish the job. See it through. So he's asking here, the Lord, sun stand still so they can finish the battle. I love this because Joshua and the nation of Israel was given. They had unfinished business unfinished business they still had work to do so look at this verse 13 so the sun stood still and the moon stopped until the nation avenged themselves of their enemies is it not written in the book of jashar that the sun stopped in the middle of the day and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day there was no day like it like that before it or after it when the lord listened to the voice of a man for the lord fought for israel then joshua and all their israel with him returned to the camp of Gilgal. <laughs> I just think this is absolutely amazing. And I just want you to paint this picture of this battle scene, okay? They had marched all night. All night. So early that morning is when this battle started. The Lord initiated it and the battle's going on. They fought all day. Evening is coming on. And then you have their commanding leader, Joshua, who makes his prayer request. God, make the sun stand still and the moon. Stand still, or the Valley of Ahalons. Stand still. As the, the evening is coming on, so we can take care of this unfinished business. Now, if you're one of the, if you're the one of the army people, if you're one of the ones that's actually in the battle, and I could just picture this happening, like, hey boys, <laughs> we're it's almost over. The dark's coming. We're going to be able to rest. I know that we've been going all night long. Like I can't wait to rest. But could you imagine, like they didn't have watches like we've got now. But them looking at the sun where they could tell the time, we're like, man, what's going on? Like, it's not getting dark. It's not getting dark. We're still having to fight the battle. And I wonder how many miracles that we've been a part of that we didn't even recognize until later. So if you could imagine them debriefing after this battle, they just marched on like nothing had happened. They went, the battle scene was going on, it was getting late in the evening. Oh, sun, stand still moon stand still and it did so they could finish the job so they could finish it and then once they finished it i loved it it was like it was no big deal they just went on that's what verse 15 then joshua and all the Israel they returned to the camp of gilgal it's like man this is awesome and when i first read this i was like wait a minute they are not they are not experiencing like the full experience of of what happened of what took place like they're just like, ah, oh, God did a miracle. But that's not what it is. Joshua's faith was so profound that they expected it. And then when it come through, God did his part. They did all of their part. God did all of his part. Church, if you need a miracle in your life, do all that you can. But expect the results. Expect God to move. Expect him to move. But church, do not expect God to move if you're not willing to sling a sword yourself. Get prepared. Go to work. Do what you need to do. So there's two groups of people here. So I ask you again, have you seen a miracle in your life? Whether it be in your life or someone else's life, have you experienced a miracle? Maybe it was you. Maybe you yourself experienced a miracle. Or maybe it was so close to you that you lived it, you felt it too. Joshua asked for a miracle in his prayer to God, and he got it. He got this miracle, and he went to work. God said, all right, we got this battle. We got, I'm giving them over to you. We got this. So what, we, what do we do now? Joshua went to work. He went to battle. And then he saw that it wasn't finishing up. Okay, sun stands still. In church, the sun stood still. Maybe you need a sun stand still prayer in your life. Maybe you need a miracle in your life. Church, ask it to God. You're like, no, there's no way I'm going to ask that. It seems ridiculous. Church, it can't be any more ridiculous than asking the sun to stand still. I'm serious. Asking the sun to stand still. I'll never forget this. This is when, uh, uh, from Garrett and Sarah, and, and I'm using them again, and I'm, I'm hoping they don't mind. 
I didn't know what to do. So when I got this news, and I think it was Saprina, the one who told me, Saprina is uh, Garrett's mom. So she filled me in on what was going on. And uh, Amy is like, all right, Lord, what do we need to do? I was kind of like Joshua here, all right, Lord, what's the battle plan here? What, what do we need to do? And uh, so we gathered, every, we gathered as many people as we could in here, and we met together, and this was uh, on an evening, and we started praying. We, we, we prayed together here, specifically for Garrett and Sarah and Garrison. And we were coming together right here and we, to, to pray over them. And as we were coming together to pray, um, one of the guys said, he said, listen, this is no ordinary prayer. Guys, we're going to battle here. We're getting in the trenches with them. So take this prayer serious. And as I was reading this and I was praying over this, I thought, that, that is one of the key components of our faith is that realizing that, hey, we're going to battle here. We need to take this serious. If there is an enemy that comes against you, you're going to take it serious. When we come together and we pray in church, I'm telling you, God moved in that young boy's life. And you can see when you leave here today, unbelievable miracle. But what happened? Church, we went to battle. We went to battle. And I think that was a preparation of what we would experience um, almost a year later uh, with Kelly and Spartans. And guess what we said? We did the same thing. Guys, we're going to meet together. We're going to pray uh, over, over Kelly and Spartans over this. And we said the same thing. Guys, remember Garrett and Sarah, we're going to battle here. We're going to battle for the Spartans. So we come together, and it was like a scene just like this. <laughs> oh, God, hear us. Make the sun stand still over the Sluss's life. God's sun stand still over the Spartan's life. And church, God moved. But there were some believing people who prayed the power of God in a miracle. And we went to battle. Church, I'm asking you this morning, do you need a miracle of God in your life? And maybe you're so blinded by your situation, you can't see it. You can't see it. Church, it's time for you to pray. Let me back up a little bit earlier. We said that Joshua had good people around him. Church, when you're going into battle, who are you going to share that information with? Who are you going to tell? Who, you going, who do you want to go into battle with you? You don't have to have a whole congregation to pray with you. You've got a prayer request. You take, I encourage you to take your spouse with you. Uh, I encourage you to take your family with you. But maybe there's some people outside of that. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand this morning is that if you need a miracle, there's things that you can do. Get prepared. Do all that you can. But sometimes you need some people that's going to be in the trenches with you, that's going to go into battle with you. Church, and you call on them and collaboratively together, man, you pray. You pray. Several months ago, my cousin was up here on stage and he'd done the intro and found out that he had um, brain tumors. And I remember talking with him, and he's almost gotten to the point where he was numb that he couldn't pray. He didn't even know how to pray or what, what to say. This is when it's so important to have key people in your life that can go to battle with you and make intercessory prayer on your behalf. Church, do you need a miracle this morning? I'm encouraging you to do something ridiculous. It cannot be any more ridiculous than asking God for the sun to stand still so you can do what you need to do. But church, that's what I'm asking you to do today. This is what is on my heart to share with you as we talk about miracles. You need a miracle in your life. Maybe it's something ridiculous. Church, I ask it. But be prepared to do all that you can. Yeah. And watch what God does. Church, I know what it's like to not even have the words to pray. And it's nothing but tears hitting the floor. You call out to God and watch what he does. I have no idea what you're going on with. No, no idea what's going on in your life. But if you need a miracle, just they're happening all around us. Whether you can see it or not, they're happening all around us. Here's your opportunity to make your ridiculous request to God. Maybe you're here this morning, or maybe besides the prayer request, 
besides going to battle like that, you need to get prepared and do all that you can. Maybe you've not been giving it your all, and it's time for you to step up and give it your all. You've, you've got to do that. And this is a decision that you have to make. <laughs> Simply asked. Uh, I say growing up, uh, I was never required at school to, uh, to make straight A's. I was never required. But I was required to do one thing, my very best. My very best. And it's always stuck. And with uh, my kids... Uh, they're not required to make uh, straight A's, but they are required uh, to give their very best. So whether it comes to math or spelling, it, it, doesn't, ma- it doesn't matter. To give their very best. And so in your situation that you're experiencing right now, you need a miracle. There's two parts of this. One, are you giving it your very best? And if you're not, that's what your prayer request is today. Lord, help me that I can give this my very best. Because I'm talking to all you that's in school, that you would give it your very best. You've got to give it your very best. You cannot expect God to do his all while you're being lazy. You've got to give it your very best. Adults, and maybe there's a situation in front of you. Regardless of the situation, are you giving it your very best? Are you giving it your all? You've got to give it your all. Joshua led the army to give their all, even though God was fighting behind the scenes, giving their all, and still made this ridiculous request so they could get the job done. Give it your very best. Some of you right here, you're already in the battle. You're giving it your very best, and you still need an act of God. Right now is the time for you to respond. Two groups of people. One, it's time to step up and give your very best. And the others, you're already giving your very best, and you need a ridiculous prior request. How is God speaking to you today? Now is your time to respond. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word. And we just ask God that you would speak loud and clear to us this morning. As we respond now to your word, may we do, Father, what's needed to be done. As you continue to pray, there's some of you here today, and you need to step it up. You need to give it your all. Church, whether it be your marriage, uh, in your family, uh, at work, you, you not be giving your all, and it's time to give it your all. Now's the time. Now's the time. Church, if that's you today, then I encourage you right now to take this moment to ask God for strength, uh, the leadership, the guidance that you may give your very best and hold nothing back, your very best. Your very best. Right now, would you just use this as an opportunity to talk to the Lord, whatever that is, to give that situation, to give your family, uh, your, your marriage, your job, whatever that is, give your school, um, just give it your very best. Maybe it's your relationship with God that's struggling right now. And it's time to give it your very best. Right now, it's just your opportunity to talk to the Lord and how you can respond. Are you giving him your very best? It's time to go to battle. Are you giving him your very best? There's those of you here today, and like we said, that you are in the process right now of you're in a battle. You're in a battle. And you're you're doing all that you can. And sometimes it seems like you're still sinking. And maybe you need that ridiculous request that you need to make a ridiculous request to the Lord right now is your opportunity if that's you today and you've got a ridiculous prayer request that just seems like man one of those requests that just seems so far fetched so out there right now is your opportunity to call that out to the Lord so right now I just want to give you the opportunity to make that request known whatever that looks like let's give it to God God here's this situation and here's my request just right now is your opportunity why we're using this as an opportunity for you to talk to the Lord. If the Lord has burdened you or you feel the need to come to the altar, then come to this altar. There is no shame. This is the great place to be. Maybe you're here today and God has already worked a miracle in your life. Or maybe you want to come to the altar and give thanks. For whatever it is, however God is moving your life, that's how we want you to respond. You need a ridiculous prayer request? Call it out to the Lord right now. Give Him your all right now. Give him your all. And how he might be leading your life right now. Now is your opportunity to respond. You need a miracle in your life? Call out to the Lord. Got a ridiculous request right now? Church, just call it out to the Lord. And then, Father, there's some ridiculous requests being made right now. And we just know that you can move and work. We've seen it too many times in the past. 
Father, I myself am a miracle just standing here. And I just thank you so much for all that you've done. God, I thank you so much for all that you're going to do. God, over the past year, we've just seen your mighty hand in so many lives. You've freed people from addictions. God, you've saved marriages. God, you've saved souls. Families are being restored. Marriages are being restored. People finding work. God, you're just doing so much. It's unreal. And Father, sometimes it's so much, it's hard for us to even comprehend. Thank you, God, for the miracles that we see. Father, right now, we thank you for the miracles that we're going to see. As you continue to pray, you're here this morning. Maybe you need somebody to pray for you. I'd love to have the opportunity for it. Nobody's looking around. It's an opportunity for me to pray for you. If you've got something going on in your life, and you just want somebody to pray for you, I'm just going to ask you if you would just to slip your hand up and say, Yes, Pastor, will you just pray for me? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There'll be others. Hey, just pray for me. Amen. Heavenly Father, you see these hands and what they represent. It's real people with real life situations. And God, I just lift them up to you and whatever it is that they are experiencing. God, that your peace may be with them and that they may hear a word from you. Father, we thank you for the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit. And God, we just ask that you'd make yourself, may it be so known, may your presence be so known in their life. God, that they would know, that they would be convinced that you are there. God, do something great in their life and help them, Father, to make wise decisions. So that the decisions they make would honor you. Father, I know that we're surrounded by so many different situations and battles that surround us. Help us, Father, that we can continue to march forward, moving forward, letting you lead us, letting you guide us. Help us, Lord, that we can see. Open our eyes, God, that we can see you. And right now, Father, we need a miracle. Move and work, Father. As we do all that we can, God, we just ask that you do what you do. Help us, Father, as we prepare. Help us, Father, as we go into battle, that we would give you our very best, that we would give our spouse our very best, that we give our families, our careers, uh, our school our very best and hold nothing back. Father, thank you so much for your word. And I richly bless us this week as we live it out and be a light unto others. Thank you, God, so much for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. In the powerful name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Would you take a moment to give God some praise? God, you're so very awesome. Show these miracles.